Ukrainian forces have been making slight gains in their counteroffensive against Russia. But as The Economist reports, this plan may only be a short-term solution in a very long-term conflict. A recent article suggests instead Ukrainian officials and Western allies should recalibrate their militaristic and economic strategies. It says, quote, instead of aiming to win and then rebuild, the goal should be to ensure that Ukraine has the staying power to wage a long war and can thrive despite it. For more on this, let's bring in Zanny minton Beddoes. She's the editor-in-chief of The Economist. Zanny, it's great to have you here again. It was literally, it was one day, it was a year ago that we were discussing really? a lot of these same issues, <laughs> almost to the day. So let me ask you about this cover and Ukraine. Um, what does recalibration look like? Well, the, what I think needs to happen is that the, this summer, there was a hope that the Ukrainians who, once they started their counteroffensive, would really push the Russians back a long way and ideally establish themselves with a land, break the Russian land bridge and be in a strong position to subsequently negotiate. And I think two things have become clear. One is that there's been very little progress. It's a, it's a thousand kilometre front. And the Ukrainians have actually taken back only 0.25 percent of the territory that the Russians occupied. So really very little. And I was there a couple of weeks ago, and it became very clear to me in a, in a week's worth of reporting that this is not going to move anytime soon. It's, a, it's going to be a long war of attrition. And so what we wrote, and I wrote in coming back from that, was that we actually need to have a sort of mindset shift in the way we think about this. Because in this country in particular, in the US, I think there was a sense, get the counteroffensive, have a quick victory, and then the war is behind us and start rebuilding the country. And I think we need to shift to say, this is going to take a long time, and we need to help Ukraine ensure that it can thrive as a country in the territory that it controls, even as it takes a long time to push the Russians out. And that's a big shift. That means this is not going away anytime soon. But there are, you know, there are parallels for this. And one that really strikes me is actually is Israel. Mm. Israel has thrived as an economy, despite having, you know, countries wanting to wipe it off the face of the earth and having real existential threats. And so it can be done. It just requires a different way of thinking about this war. It's not going to be finished anytime soon. Do you think, um, I'm going to ask you two questions in one here. Do you think that the Western uh, countries that are supporting Ukraine are on for that kind of future? And when you met with Vladimir Zelensky, is he concerned about losing support from Europe, from the United States, if it's going to be a long slog? So the answer to the first one is, I don't know. I hope so, because this is, I mean, what is important, particularly in the U.S., to realize that this is, an, this is such an existential war for Ukraine, but it's way beyond that. I mean, Putin wants to get rid of Ukraine as an independent country, and he will then, you know, he won't stop there. It really does, for Europe, this is absolutely essential, and thus for the, you know, the grand words of the rules-based order. But this is a really, really big deal. Is there going to be enough support? I think that right now there are still enough support. Clearly, in this country, people are tiring of it. Mm. But once you lay out the stakes, I think there could be enough support. But when we talked to Zelensky, and I had first been to see him in three weeks after the war started last year, when Kiev was a very, very different place yeah. to what it felt like today. This time around, he said to me something interesting. He said, and I'm paraphrasing slightly, but he said, I have uh, you know, a good intuition, he said, and I talk to my Western partners and they all say, we're with you, we will stick with you. But I look into their eyes, and some of them I'm not so sure. So he's, he's very astute, and I think he's worried. And it would be catastrophic for Ukraine if that Western support were to go. But what, but what needs to happen is it needs to shift the nature of support to ensuring that it can thrive as a country. And that means two things. One, different kind of military focus. So, yes, it needs the weaponry, but really it needs defense. It needs to be able to defend itself against those indiscriminate drone and missile mm -hmm. attacks from, from Russia. Let me switch to the question of China. We were here a year ago. You're here now for a New York Historical Society event where you're going to talk to your correspondents from China and Russia about all of these questions. But let me ask you about China. A year ago, you said we might be seeing peak China, which means its best past is, is behind or its best days are behind it. Is that, do you think that's the case? And did I really say that? That was one of my better calls. You did, I know. Well, we'd run the <laughs> I, clip if we had I, time. But... I, feel, I feel vindicated, yes, because this time a year ago, people were thinking that when China opened up after COVID, its economy would boom. And I was quite, quite worried about China then. And this year, the Chinese economy has done very badly. I think there are lots of reasons for thinking that China is in, in sort of deep, medium-term trouble. One is that its economy has a huge problem. with the, There's a big property crash, property bust there. 
to Xi Jinping has been really kind of pushing down private business there in the sense that the most sort of productive entrepreneurial parts of the economy, he's really scared them. Hmm. And then this, you know, this big standoff with the United States and the export controls the U.S. has put on have really hurt the Chinese economy. So, you know, look, peak China is a big, big thing for us to say, but I think China's has a lot of problems ahead. And I think it behooves the U.S. not to, to feel confident because the U.S. is in a much better shape than China. Zanny Mittenbetto is editor-in-chief of The Economist. Thanks.